Right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Raise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift up your Bible. Hallelujah. Quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know. Thank you, Jesus. We are, we are not behind. Hallelujah. But I know God is going to do something amazing. Hallelujah. Let's just say it together. Okay. Say it together. Hallelujah. One, two, and three. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe what God is, the word of God is. What God can do, the word of God can do. The God's word is God's will and God's will is God's word. Therefore, I have what the Bible says I can have. I am what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Bible says I can. I present my body as a holy and living sacrifice. Lord Jesus has given me the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. I cannot be confused or defeated. I have the mind of Christ. Jesus has made me holy and righteous. I am dead to sin and alive to God. Holy Spirit, help me and speak to me. I choose to receive God's word as bread for today and as seed for tomorrow. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, praise God. And you know, last, last two Sundays, we've been talking about the Feast of the Lord. And it just happened to be in this time of the fall, the, the Jewish feast falls into place. You know? And we, just, we are not just looking at the feast for the sake of the feast. Because the Bible tells us, hallelujah, that under the new covenant in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when we look at the Bible, hallelujah, when we look at the old covenant, hallelujah, we do not look at the same lens hallelujah that people had before jesus christ came we have a different lens to look at the things hallelujah when we look at the old covenant hallelujah and old covenant is all this feast hallelujah and if you remember if anybody has this verse first Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 8 i'm gonna say it hallelujah and bible says let us celebrate the feast hallelujah it's not asking us not to celebrate but it says let us celebrate the feast hallelujah not with the old level Hallelujah. Not with old understanding, not with old revelation, not with the old way of doing it, not with old tradition. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he says, celebrate the feast. Hallelujah. And he says, how do you celebrate? He says, hallelujah, with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Somebody say truth. See, all the old covenant feasts had a truth hidden, with, hidden within them. And it was revealed when Jesus came and walked on this earth. And he just started revealing himself. Hallelujah. And he just started giving his revelation who he is. And it was all, all concealed and hidden in the old covenant, hallelujah. But in the new covenant, it has been opened up for us, hallelujah. Are we there? Praise God. So when we talk about the feast, we just don't talk about feast and the tradition that goes along with the feast. But we talk about, hallelujah, what is the truth and revelation with that feast? Isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So today, today in fact, yesterday marks, uh, marks the beginning of a season of eight days, you know, that is called Sukkot or the feast of Tabernacles, isn't it? Hallelujah. Sukkot or Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, just for the Gujarati, I like that word. It's called Mandava Parva, isn't it? Hallelujah. It's a Feast of Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Praise God. We can read certain passage. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bible talks it in detail, many places, but I have certain things that God has placed on my heart. We're going to talk about that. So if your Bible open, otherwise the um, otherwise media team is going to help you. Leviticus chapter 23. And we're going to read three verses. Hallelujah. Uh, four verses, 20, 40 to 43. Leviticus 23, 40 to 43. And this is what God spoke, hallelujah. And God spoke to Moses and Moses spoke to other people and says, you shall take yourself on the first day of the fruit. First day, the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook. And you know, yeah, yeah, understand, take all those things. But do, do what after taking those things? And he says, you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Somebody say rejoice. You know, I know Bible is a strange word, isn't it? God is the, God is the one who can ask us to do different things. And God says, I'm commanding you to rejoice. rejoice. I said, God, how can you command us to rejoice? He said, no, I'm asking you to rejoice. Are we there? Tell your neighbor, rejoice. rejoice. Isn't it? Hallelujah. God does not say what is going on in your life. God says, when you come into my presence, you rejoice. Isn't it? No matter what circumstances you are going through, what challenges you have, what mountains you still need to climb, what closed door you are still facing, God says, when you come in my presence, you rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice before the Lord, not for one day, not for two days. Can I tell, can I tell you, God is a good God. You know, the feast before this is a feast of a day of atonement. You fast for one day. But after that, the feast comes, which is a feast of tabernacle, you rejoice for? Seven days. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Are, are we there? He says, rejoice before me for seven days. Hallelujah. We're going to read a couple of more verses. Hallelujah. And he says, you shall keep it as a feast of the Lord seven days in a year. It shall be statute forever in your generation. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. Isn't it? Or tabernacle or if you have a, a NIV, it says, I think a temporary shelter or something like that. You know, 
it, 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 it looks like a booth. It's like a, a, a hut, you know, which is, which is covered by, a, by the willows and the branches of the tree, isn't it? And this says, all who are native Israel shall dwell in booths. Verse number 43. So that your generation may know. Somebody says no. no. See, God is asking us to do anything so that people will know. Are we there? So that people will? Isn't it? Are, are we there? See, God says, hallelujah, let your good works so shine before men. Why? Why? So that not you receive glory. So that people may know. People may know that how good God is. So when you live in the booth, hallelujah, your generation will know that I made children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. And then he says, what else they will know? I am the Lord your God. I'm the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I had three points. Maybe we'll skip it to the two points today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The sermon title is Jesus is our shelter. Amen. Jesus our Shelter, and not, and not the North American vocabulary, shelter means like, you know, people who don't have anything to stay and they go in a shelter. I'm not talking about that shelter, but shelter is often as, as if a covering over our head, Amen. as if a dwelling place, as if a booth, as if a hut, as if a house, if I may call it. Hallelujah. Jesus, our shelter. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing Jesus says when you celebrate this, God says, when you celebrate this, rejoice before the Lord. Rejoice before the Lord. And sometimes I think, in the Christian circle, a lot of time we talk about faith, we talk about prayer, we talk about fasting, we talk about a lot of things, but the spiritual principle of rejoicing have not been looked in detail. You know, we don't talk about, you know, why rejoicing? You know, what is joy? What is the purpose of joy in our lives? Why? Because we still understand that joy is a circumstantial thing that God gives us into our life. We do something, we get something, and we have joy. God says, before you get anything, when you come into my presence, you rejoice. Are we there? Praise God. So number one point I want to tell you, hallelujah. The joy is in His presence. The joy is where? In His. If you're looking for joy, joy is in His presence. Hallelujah. Joy is in His presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The people were commanded that rejoice before the Lord. Hallelujah. So let me tell you, hallelujah. When we come into the presence of Lord, it is obedience out of your life that you may rejoice. Are we there? It is a, it, God is asking us to obey that commandment, if I may say that, that rejoice before me when you come in my presence. And when you do that, there are many things you'll be blessed with. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to say something. Maybe it will rock our boat of tradition, but that's okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, Psalm 16 and verse number 11 says something like that. Hallelujah. And he says, hallelujah. Praise God. You will show me. Who will show me? You will show me the path of life. And in your presence, in your presence, there's a fullness of joy. You know, in your wife, you have a little bit of joy. In your children, you have a little bit of joy. In your friends, you have a little bit of joy. In your house, you have a little bit of joy. But in the presence of God, it's not a little bit, but it's a fullness of joy. A joy can ever be. The full measure of joy is compromised, uh, is, is comprised in the presence of God. So when you come in the presence, you can have the capacity to experience all joy that is there possible. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Are we there? Praise God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do we know that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he just did not came to start a new religion? You know, we know that. Let me tell you, it's a spirit. He did not come to start a religion. And we can talk to that about people who don't know Christ. But if you just see it from the Jewish perspective, he came to fulfill what was written in the Old Covenant. He says, I have not came to abolish the law, but I have came to fulfill what law and prophets have talked about it. Isn't it? So when, when Jesus stands on the Mount of Transfiguration, you know that Elijah and who comes aside beside him? Moses come beside him. Moses is the lawgiver. Elijah was a prophet of God. He says, I will fulfill what Moses has been speaking. I will fulfill what Elijah has been speaking. And it will be fulfilled in me and through me. Hallelujah. Because I am fulfillment of law and prophet both. Hallelujah. Everything that Jesus has done, every particular incident that has happened in Jesus' life that is leading to our salvation and, and our benefit that has happened on a feast day. Jesus was crucified on Passover because he is our perfect Passover lamb. Are we there? Jesus rose up again on the day of 
the feast of first fruits. Why? Because he is the firstborn of the dead. First fruit of the resurrection. Are we there? Isn't it? So if everything Jesus does in the feast, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. What happens on Sukkot? You know, sometimes we say oh, it's a prophetic event, and it is a prophetic event. It will happen. Zechariah 14, if we get a chance, we'll talk about it. But I want to kind of say something to you, hallelujah, praise God. Luke chapter 1, verse number 5. Luke chapter 1, verse number 5. Now, the Bible says, Then there was a day in the head of the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So this talks about this couple called Elizabeth and Zechariah. And he says, hallelujah, he was the division of Abijah. Uh, every detail in the Bible is very important, isn't it? Depending on how deep you want to go. Isn't it? See, before the temple was built, God has put two wise kings over them. Not only David, but also Solomon was there. So David collected, gathered every resources that is required to build the temple. Are we there? At the same time, he established people. He says, there will be a core of this many people. He established them. He gave them direction. This will do that. These people will do that. These people will do that. This will be doorkeepers. They will be uh, temple treasury managers. So he ordained a lot of people. Even Solomon did ordain so many people. Same way, they also ordained priests into the temple of the Lord. Now, Levites are the priests who need to serve in the temple of the Lord. Every Levite cannot serve whole day. So they made a whole schedule of Levites to serve. Are we there? Are we there? Am I speaking English? Yeah, okay. Uh, they, may, they asked the Levites to serve. So he made an order according to the tribe that they are born into. So there was an order of Abijah. There's a whole scheduling calendar, just like one that is sitting, sticking on the, on the door into the electrical panel. There was a, there was a scheduling calendar there. And different tribe, uh, sorry, different genealogy will serve in a different season into the temple. Are we there? Praise God. Bible gives us this particular information so that we would know what season was it. Hallelujah. And historians, when they go back to the order of Abijah from the first chronicle, they know that when Zechariah was serving, it was around May, June. Okay, around that time he was serving there. At that time, the Gabriel comes to him and says, Zechariah, your wife shall have a child. He says, I am, and then he goes into this, this silent treatment for nine months, isn't it? And, and, and Bible says, this will happen to you. Are we there? That happens around May to June, according to the order of of the division of Abijah. Are we there so far? Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then Bible says, if you don't know that it's written in 1 Chronicles chapter, chapter 24, 1 to 18, you can go home and read it, isn't it? Luke 1, 23, 24 says something like this. So it was as soon as the days of his service, it means uh, Zechariah's service was completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months saying whatever. So in May or June, Zechariah heard the prophecy. In May or June, Elizabeth conceived. Are we there so far? And five months she didn't do anything. She hid herself. Isn't it? Are we there so far? So five months comes to November. Let's just say that. Is it? Hallelujah. Let's read this verse. Luke 1, 26 and 27. Now in the sixth month. Sixth month. So June to sixth month is? December. Is that it? In December. Now the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Verse 27, please. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and virgin's name was Mary. So Gabriel comes to Mary in month of December, saying all those things. Which you know, you know, when we do a Christmas, we look one, two, Matthew one, two, we talk about it. That, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you shall conceive a child. All those things that happen, isn't it? Praise God. Are we there so far? Yes. Praise God. Now, as I told you, everything that Jesus has done in his life is marked by the feast that was given in the Old Testament. Is that the December month was such a month that, that this Gabriel comes to Mary. I know it was not 25th December, just, but just saying, isn't it? He came to, came to, came to uh, Mary and explains him that this is God's plan for your life, that God, you will have a son, the Holy Spirit will give it to you, and you shall bear a son, he will save his people from the sins, hallelujah, praise God. What was that time, hallelujah? The historian can track back. In fact, it was a time of Hanukkah. It was a time of Hanukkah. Hanukkah comes in December, hallelujah. Why it is a time of Hanukkah, hallelujah? Because through the birth of Lord Jesus Christ, always a prophecy associated that the light is coming into the world. 
are we there light is coming into the world light is coming so when mary gets this message it is a feast of hanukkah hallelujah that she will be pregnant hallelujah praise god hallelujah you know john uh, john chapter 1 6 7 8 9 says hallelujah there was a man sent from god whose name was john and he says this man come to witness to bear the witness of a light that all that all through him might believe hallelujah he was not the light but he was sent to bear the witness of the light hallelujah i know and all, all you intelligent people we can now calculate if mary conceived jesus christ in the december you know she will give birth to him somewhere around fall month are we there month know, fall month hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord luke chapter 2 verse number 10 and 11 hallelujah praise god all right let, 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 let's just let's just keep it right there hallelujah praise god thank you jesus before i go there i want to tell you a little praise god Thank you, Jesus. That, hallelujah, Bible says, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, John chapter 1, in him was the light. Light was the life of man, isn't it? He came into this world, hallelujah. The world did not accept him. So all the details about the birth is given to in the John chapter 1. But there are incidents that mention, isn't it? Incidents mentioned. Hallelujah, praise God. Number one incident, the angels come on the day of the birth of Lord Jesus. I know it's not a Christmas sermon, but just, hallelujah. I'm just, praise God. Luke chapter 2 says, then the angels say to them, Again, anything that say, it's not they just thought of it. The Holy Spirit has asked them to speak it. Every word of it. Bible says, hallelujah, the world will end. But every dot, every tittle from the word of God will not go away without being fulfilled. They say, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Why joy? Why joy? Why joy? Isn't it? Verse number 11 says, Hallelujah, praise God. For there, for there is born to you in this day in the city of David a Savior who Christ the Lord. Let's just read the Passion Translation for the same verse, Hallelujah, praise God. But the angel reassured them, said, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you a good news. The most joyous news the world has ever heard. And if we don't understand Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, we would just limit this joy to a birth of a Savior. But it's more than that. It is more than that, hallelujah. We just read in Psalm chapter 16, verse number 11, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. So you know what God is saying? As Jesus has come onto the earth, the God has walked onto this earth, the fullness of Jesus Christ, the fullness of God has come to dwell among you. And that is why now you will also have the same joy because the presence of Lord has come upon you. It's not just a birth of a Messiah so that we will be saved. It's not birth of a Messiah so we don't worry about sins. But it is the joy walked in. Hallelujah. And the presence of God walked in so that we may have joy. John 1.14 Amplified. Hallelujah. Amplified says something like that. And the word became flesh. And tabernacled among us. So I believe along with a lot of Jewish historians. That we know that Jesus was not born in 2050s. And we know that the debate is over, isn't it? Hallelujah. I believe that he is born on the day of the Sukkot. Hallelujah. On the day of the Sukkot. Hallelujah. Because he is the tabernacle of God. He is the tabernacle of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's just go back to that. Hallelujah. Because just Psalm chapter 16, verse number 11. We just read it. But we can read from passion if we can. Hallelujah. This is passion. Because of you, I have known, the, I know the path of life. As I test. Taste the fullness of joy in your presence. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Sir, madam, I want to encourage you. If you are actually looking for joy in other places, it's not found. It is found where the presence of God is. It is where the Holy Spirit moves mightily. It is where the freedom is. It is where, hallelujah, when he's worshipped and he's exalted and he's cherished. That's where the presence of God flows. And where the presence of God flows, that's why you are so joyous. Are we there? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. You know, I, I, I bet, you know, people would question, why are you so happy? I, I, I heard last time my pastor says, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the presence of God is always with me. And when there is a the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. That's why I am happy. Are we there? Isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's not a lifestyle of denial, but it is a lifestyle of joy. I'm not saying when we are happy, we are denying the challenges that we go through. I'm not saying that, isn't it? Hallelujah, praise God. This is not some euphoric uh, as mindset that we live in. We live in the awareness of the presence of God. That's why we have joy. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Bible says, for the joy saw it before him, he endured the cross. The, he went to the cross all because there was a joy there. Hallelujah. Bible says that Jesus gives this parable of this, this guy who is giving this talent to these people to invest in. And whenever they have invested well, uh, Bible says, he comes and says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter where? To the joy of your master. It means enter, the pre enter where the presence of God is. Enter where God is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Joy is the great evidence of your conversion. Are we there? We're miserable people. <laughs> Before we met Jesus. A grumpy old people, isn't it? Hallelujah. But when Jesus came, you know, the joy of the Lord entered our life. Hallelujah. A genuine joy, I would say. Not just a this supernatural smile that, you know, you can just fake it. It's, it's not fake it, till make it. It is the joy of the Lord that enters our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Even if the things doesn't work well, there's a joy of the Lord because the presence of God is with us. You know, in the book of Acts, we talk about healings and miracles, and that is all good, and that's perfect, hallelujah. But do you know there's, joy, there's a lot of talk about joy in the book of Acts? Acts chapter 5, verse number 11, hallelujah. Bible says, they rejoice greatly. Why they rejoice greatly? Because they counted themselves worthy to be persecuted for the name of the Christ. So when they were persecuted, they were joyous. They were joyous. Why? It was not the persecution, hallelujah. But the presence of God was always with them. Hallelujah, praise God. See, hallelujah, they, they were rejoicing. They, they departed from the council and they were beaten up actually. You know, just they didn't walk out. They were beaten up and they were rejoicing. Why is it so worthy to be beaten up for Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah, praise God. You know, they understood that when you're beaten up for Christ, you're actually a fellowship with the Christ suffering. Isn't it? And that's why you're joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more verse, one of my favorite verse. Hallelujah, which I prayed of, over a lot of you. Acts chapter 13, verse number 52. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. And the Bible says, Hallelujah. Praise God. And the disciples were. And the disciples were filled with the joy and with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are spirit filled people. It doesn't mean we are too weird. You know, we can be joyful people. Hallelujah. And the disciples were filled with joy and filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. So I know you have questions right now. Okay, Pastor, what do I do about my situation right now? Hallelujah. You know, thank you, Jesus. Are you prophetic people or pathetic people? Are we prophetic or pathetic? We are prophetic, isn't it? So uh, we are prophetic. We are not pathetic, isn't it? Hallelujah. So prophetic people, hallelujah, speak the prophecy of the word of God into our lives. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, this is the verse that I pray over my house every single day. Psalm 118, verse number 15. Hallelujah. Praise God. The voice of rejoicing and the salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Hallelujah. I pray that over my house every day. Lord, my house, which is my tent, and I am a righteous man because you have called me to righteous, not that I have done anything. But if, it, if I am righteous, and if this is my tent, according to your word, there's a shouts of rejoicing and a shouts of salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's a joy in the house of the righteous. Are we there? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A joy in the house of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to tell you a couple of more things about joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. If joy is watching, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Joy is a spiritual principle which we have never learned about. What do you mean spiritual principle? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, by faith, you can do certain things. When you pray, you can do certain things. I want to tell you, with joy, you can do certain things. Are we there? With joy, you can do certain things. Joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just give you a few, 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 few uh, verses. Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 3. And we can read it very carefully, word by word. Therefore, with joy. Therefore, with, not without joy. Without joy, you will not be able to draw it. But when you have joy, you will be able to actually draw the waters from the wells of salvation. A joy will help you draw waters from the wells of salvation. Joy will help you draw everything that is packaged in the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ. Are we there? Through joy. Not through grumping or complaining or anything like that, but through joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me give you another principle. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Philippians 4, 4, you already know it, so I'm not going to go there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, James says, count it all joy. <laughs> I like it if there was a full stop right there. I said, James, I got it. 
But he says, count it all joy when you face various kinds of trials. I said, doesn't make sense. You know, when trials come, challenges come. You know, difficulties come, or sickness come. Or even, you know, temptation, sometimes we fall, backslide, and all those things happen. Shame comes. And James says, you know, you can overcome that shame and rejoice in the presence of God because the trials are sent to you so that it can do your purpose, so that you can develop a character which Christ desired you to have. So what do you do? You rejoice. Are we there? Praise God. So number one thing, hallelujah, with joy you can draw water. Without joy, dole will not go downstairs. The bucket will not go downstairs. Isn't it? Have you seen the have you, have you seen a well in the village in India? Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. Like the this this what do you, what do you call it? I know I know the Gujarati Garagadi. Uh, yeah, yeah, pull it and you just like throw water and you just pull it out. There is no joy. The water will the, the bucket is not going down. Isn't it? But the, with the joy, you'll be able to draw out what God has to offer to you. Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Psalm 126, verse number five. I listen to this verse also very carefully. Those who saw so where in tears so when you're crying actually you're sowing you know you're sowing your prayers in tears they shall reap no they will they shall not reap joy but they shall reap in joy when you're crying and crying out your prayer you're just sowing in the presence of god and a lot of answers are coming out but when you are starting to hallelujah walk in the joy you will start experiencing the reaping of all those those that you have sown in the presence of God. Are we there? Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. A joy is a powerful spiritual principle. Uh, we are okay to cry out and open our heart before God. But let me tell you, nothing can take away real joy of Lord Jesus Christ. No circumstances, no recession, no job loss, no cancer can take away the joy of the Lord that God has placed upon our life. Are we there? Otherwise, every sick person who is Christian would be, like, you know, discouraged and grumpy. I don't even have to teach about, you know, what, what joy on the face of Gabriel. And, and I, I know, I, 38 months, Manisha, you said? 38 months. It's not that I've seen only him after month one and month 30th. Even during when the things were going on and, you know, we would get message from Manisha and we would pray for certain things, he would still have the joy. Is that? And I would think about the treatment that he's going through. I said, oh, man, Lord, you know, I kind of know that because I work there, so it's very painful. But still there's joy of the Lord. Are we there? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You can sow in tears, but in joy you can reap. In joy you can reap. Hallelujah. I pray, hallelujah, that the season of reaping is coming to a lot of us. And let us reap in joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us not just complain about it was so bad, you know. You know a lot of times we testify like that. We got a new job, but my job, old job was so, so bad. God has given you new things, so be blessed and thankful of the new thing rather than cursing the old things. Isn't it? Everything has its purpose and a timing into our life which God allows us to go through it. There's a season for everything and God allows us to go through it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So number one, joy will, you can draw the water. Joy you can, you know, hallelujah. You can reap, hallelujah. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 10. Hallelujah. A lot of people know the verse but don't know where it is. Isn't it? So it is Nehemiah 8, 10. It says, the joy of the Lord is my strength hallelujah it means it means if you don't have strength you don't have strength why you don't stand don't have strength because you don't have joy yeah. if you have joy then you have strength it's not the other way around do you think if you have strength i am joyful no no it, it works the other way around my brother if you have joy then god says joy is the strength if you are happy and blessed and cherish to be in the presence of god that gives the strength Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody declare the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Couple of more things about joy. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is about Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Jesus proclaimed, and Jesus reads this in the New Testament as well. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He said, because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me. Let me tell you, these are all the reasons Jesus was sent on the earth for. The whole list of it. Is right? These are the, all the reasons Jesus, Jesus was sent on the earth for. And these are all things available from Jesus. If you receive Jesus in your life and allow him to do his work, these all things are available to you and available to me. Because that's why Jesus came. Are we there? He doesn't have to go back and say, okay, I forgot the liberty, let me go get it. No, it all, all came along with it. 
Hallelujah. So number one say, he has come so that I preach healing to the broken hearted. Are we there? If you're broken hearted, Jesus offers healing. Hallelujah. Praise God. A lot of time we talk about physical healing, but we don't talk about the inside brokenness of the healing of the brokenness. I want to tell you, if you're broken from any part of your life, you know, any, any, any sad incidences, any hurt, hallelujah, thank you. Just Let's not, not, not just go and bicker about it rather than receive the healing for Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second thing he says, to proclaim the liberty to the captives. Anything that can capture us. It's not just the Toronto South Detention Center. It can be anything. He says, I proclaim liberty to you. Did you notice he proclaimed liberty first and then opened the prison door? Yeah. <laughs> Are we there? So he proclaims the liberty first. Bible says, and he spoke and it was done. So he speaks liberty over you and then the doors open up. Hallelujah. He speaks liberty over you and the doors open up. These are all things that Jesus has promised. Verse number two. Hallelujah. Praise God. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the year of God's vengeance to comfort all those who mourn. Now verse number three. Hallelujah. This is still going on mission of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. I'm not sure if you have seen ashes, but I've seen ashes. Hallelujah. And the picture was people sitting in ashes, mourning and repenting or, or grieving, whatever it is. And it says, I have given them beauty. Hallelujah. And listen to the second thing it says, and the oil of joy for the morning. Hallelujah. Are we there? Have you received a freedom from Jesus? Have you received, hallelujah, good news from Jesus? Receive the oil of joy from Jesus as well. Because he is the one who offers it. Hallelujah. Oil of joy. Somebody say oil of joy. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He has blessed us with the oil. You know, one translation says oil of gladness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But pastor, you know, you don't know what's happening. I, absolutely. I don't know. Jesus knows. That's why he still wrote it, isn't it? Hallelujah. Uh, for those who are going through difficulties, happy to be joyful. Let me give you this verse, which we all know. We only remember him for this verse. The chef of the Bible, Habakkuk. Isn't it? Chapter 3, verse number 17 and verse number 18. <laughs> How about, huh? Are, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Though the fig tree may not blossom. Okay? So I have a fig tree. I'm supposed to get the fruit of it. I'm going to sell it. It will be my income for this season. But my fig tree has not blossomed. Are we there? It's not a bi-weekly pay. It's going to come again. Now you have to wait for next year. The whole season of fruitlessness come. Season of it. Nor the fruit be on the vines. Okay, fig is not there. Now this wine is also without fruit. Though the labor of the olive may fail. I work really hard for the olives to produce fruit. It did not produce. And the fields yield no food. Let alone for the business, I don't have enough for my own thing. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold. It means either they die or perish or somebody steals them. And though there is no herd in the stalls, if you are doing an animal, uh, or you know, uh, uh, if you're an animal farmer, he says, there's no animals, there's nothing there. He says, even though all those things happen, yet, somebody say yet. Yes. Yet. Now put everything in, in your situation right now before this yet. You know, even though 50 applications of job is done, yet, even though I'm waiting for visa of my loved one, yet, even though I'm waiting to see my parents receive Jesus Christ, yet. Even though, even though my health is still not perfect, yet. Even though my children, I desire them to walk in Jesus Christ, they are not there yet. Are we there? I just put four, five. You can put whatever you want. Whatever you want. You, know, you can just write down your own thing, isn't it? Put yet. And this says, yet I will. Can somebody rejoice? Yes. <laughs> Isn't it? I say, I'm, gonna, I'm talking about rejoicing. Everybody's so sad, isn't it? <laughs> the opportunity to practice rejoicing. We are a happy church, so we can be rejoicing, isn't it? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And he says, I will joy in the Lord of my salvation. The one who has saved me, I will be joyous in him. If I don't have any other reason to be joyful, I have one reason to be joyful, that Lord has saved me and I'm happy that. Hallelujah. I am joyous in that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. One more thing about joy, and then I'm going to go to the next point, hopefully. Hallelujah. Praise God. John chapter 15, verse number 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And this verse is tucked in between so many things Jesus is talking about. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Jesus said, this thing I have spoken to you. I have spoken to you all those things. For what? So that 
so that whose joy jesus is joy remain in you so that your joy may be full can i tell you hallelujah praise god jesus did not offer her second copy or third copy of things you know i heard this term you know in india is very famous right now this term you say i i i saw when i was coming back i i watched so many people wearing abercrombie and finch which or armani t-shirts like, my goodness they all can afford armani but it, it is a second third copy and then you have to read the spelling it's a different spelling the fake copies isn't it jesus doesn't uh, doesn't offer us something that is second handed are we there i can tell you from the bible hallelujah bible says the spirit that raised jesus christ from the dead the same spirit dwells in you no second handed holy spirit the first hand spirit that was in the lord jesus christ is with you and is with me the one who walked with jesus is walking with you the one who led jesus is leading you the one who hallelujah perform miracle through jesus is doing it through you because the same holy spirit are we there second thing he says my peace i'll give it to you it is not somebody else's peace because i am the prince of peace i have the peace and i am the peace so i will give you my peace to you are we there and the third thing he also says i will also give you my joy i will give you my jesus was a happy god <laughs> isn't it praise god thank you jesus thank you lord he right. says my joy may remain in you so that your joy may be full hallelujah i want to encourage you my brothers and sisters hallelujah this is not something that you can produce but i will give you a simple key when you obey to rejoice in the presence of god you will experience the goodness of god and the presence of god and joy fills your heart is it it is required for you to rejoice though you not is i'm waiting to feel that joy no it that's not how it works that's not how it works everything works by the obedience by taking the step you put the foot in the water the jordan will part a lot of us are waiting still beside jordan because we are not willing to put our foot in the water put your foot in the water jordan will part Hallelujah. Rejoice in the presence of God. Joy of the Lord will fill your heart. Joy of the Lord will fill your heart. Why? Because it's not because I said Jesus says and lifetime he check he never lies. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So he is he is so truthful. Hallelujah. Praise God. The joy of the Lord will fill your heart and fill my mind. Are we there? Praise God. Thank you. Let me just fast forward. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to skip second point. I'm going to just go to third one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. And he says hallelujah. Remain in this boots. or one translation is remain in this temporary shelters and temporary shelters were not pakka makan you know it was not like a brick and mortar but it was made up of willows of trees and brooks and everything was there so imagine you living in a place where it's willows not even a not even a roof you know but it's willows and brooks are covering the roof so it's not a good shelter to begin with if if it rains it's going to come in if it is too hot it's going to come in you can experience every weather element even though you are in the shelter uh, number 1 it's a temporary shelter god says i have kept you in a temporary shelter a lot of time we think it's a, it's a good thing that god has done it but if we don't understand fully what god meant hallelujah god kept them in a temporary shelter so that they can experience that real shelter is the presence of god It's not that roof on your head gives you shelter it is the roof above your head which is the hand of god that gives you shelter he is our shelter hallelujah praise god not just in the times of trouble but even when these times are not troubleful he is still our shelter hallelujah so third thing you know i just second i missed it hallelujah shelter of his presence somebody say shelter of his presence hallelujah leviticus chapter 23 and verse number 42 hallelujah 23 42 hallelujah It says, "Live in a temporary shelter for seven days, isn't it? Seven is a number of full, you know, completion. So it means, you know, that 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 marks almost a season in your life that you will live live a place that your complete dependence is on God being your shelter. Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you. The festival of booths. We can talk about lot of things, but festival of booth. Hallelujah! Bible tells us that booth itself is Lord Jesus Christ for us. He is our shelter. Is it? See, we come from an India. You know, and India is a very competitive country. One point four billion people. And if you really want to be successful, they always say you need to have a hand of somebody upon you who is already successful. You know. take it somebody can support you somebody can push you somebody can connect to the right places then you can become successful because there are so many people 
Are we there? Are we there? In this life, for you to be successful, you also need a hand of somebody. But the good thing is not a hand of man, but it's a hand of God upon your life and my life. Are we there? He is your shelter and my shelter. Hallelujah. Are we there? Praise God. Let me give you, hallelujah, five things. Five things. You can receive it by faith. Five things God does through being your shelter into your life. Okay? Five things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, Psalm chapter 31 and verse number, sorry, what, so Psalm, Psalm 40, verse number 7. Psalm 40, 140, verse number 7. O God the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of the battle. At the day of the battle, you covered what? My head, hallelujah. You know, when, when, the, when, the, when the people were armored into the time of David, when they go for war, there was an armory from every body part except for your head. You know, there was a helmet as well, but still your face and everything is exposed. Somebody needs to be killed. They can be easily killed if they hit the head. He says, but when I'm going to battle, God is the one who covers my head. God is the one who covers my head. Hallelujah. God is the one who covers my head. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody says, hallelujah. His presence covers me in the day of my battle. Hallelujah. His presence covers us in the day of our battle. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Second thing I want to tell you, Psalm hallelujah, chapter 31 and verse number 20. Hallelujah. Psalm 31, verse number 20. You hide them, means righteous people, people who trust in the Lord, in the secret place of your presence from conspiracies of man. You keep them secretly in the shelter from the strife of the tongue. Isn't it? Hallelujah. He says, God, you know, people conspire. God says, don't worry. You're under my shelter. And you'll be protected no matter who is conspiring against you. Don't lose a sleep over if somebody is conspiring against you in the workplace. Don't worry about it. Because you're under the shelter of Most High God. He says, hallelujah, he will place me in this presence so that he can keep me from the conspiracies of men. A lot of times we also worry about a lot of people taking. You know, now right now in the time of social media, people can say anything behind this veil, isn't it? Hallelujah. And, and then people break people down, people pull people down. But Bible also says, hallelujah, he Keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of the tongue. Amen. Are we there? He will protect you. He is your shelter against anybody talking anything bad about you. Are we there? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say this. Hallelujah. Praise God. His presence shelters me from the conspiracy of men and from the accusing tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One more thing, Psalm 27, verse number 5. Psalm 27, verse number 5. For in the times of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Or someplace said tabernacle. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set me a high upon a rock. Hallelujah. So he says, when trouble comes, God says, he will hide me in his tabernacle. Are we there? Are we there? Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and let me tell you, there's a constant, uh, if I may not use the word struggle, but constant challenge between flesh and the spirit. When trouble comes, the flesh says, go to man, spirit says, go to God. Going to man, sometimes we find it easier. And because, uh, you know, man will say, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, you feel sympathetic, we, we, you know, we would like to hear that. Isn't it? Hallelujah. But the spirit will also always draw us to God. When the trouble comes, when the trouble comes, Trouble comes. No, I'm, I'm not saying you can have faithful prayer partners who can pray for you. Absolutely. Hallelujah. But when the trouble comes, hallelujah, God says he will hide you in his pavilion. And he says even in his tabernacle, there's a secret chamber. That's where he will put you inside. And now, now listen, the last part, last part is nice. He shall set you upon a high upon a rock. Okay, okay. So when the Bible says high, it means it's high. You know, it means, it's mean, I, I, every language it's high. So, what does it mean? It will, he will set me high upon a rock. He will set me upon a rock that is higher than my trouble. Higher than the trouble that has come to bother me. He will set my foot higher than that. Hallelujah. Are we there? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. See, the answer to the prayer is not always deliverance from a situation. 
but an answer to prayer could be a different vantage point from the presence of God. Different vantage point altogether. You'll see life differently. You'll see life completely differently. You know, it's my testimony, a lot of your testimony. I, I know, you know, friends and families, you know, their testimonies. The difficulties have given them a different vantage point towards life, the way God looks at it. We just look at the life in a 1D or 2D, and we think, okay, we can just see the next step, and, a, and a maybe the step after next, not more than that. But when life, life, you know, when we go through trouble and, you know, God hides us and God covers us, we can see that once, no, listen to me. Uh, if there's a trouble right here, trouble right here, trouble came, God hid me in the, uh, in the hiding place. You know, trouble was so big, but God says, he put me in a rock which is higher. So now my, my position is higher than my trouble. Okay, now if trouble, I'm not higher, then I can just see the trouble. I cannot see anything beyond the trouble. Can I see anything beyond trouble? Because trouble is just right there. I cannot see anything. I just, it just blocks my vision, blocks my direction. It just blocks everything that is in front of me. In fact, I was just so discouraged just looking at that trial that I, I, I wish this is to go away. You know what God does? He just don't, don't just, he can get rid of the trial. He can do that. But God says, let me just, let me just put you in a better position than that. So God hides me and God puts me in a rock that is higher. So now actually I'm standing in a higher vantage point than the trouble. I can see beyond trouble now. I can see the purpose of the trouble. I can see the way out of the trouble. I can see the result that is going to come out of this trouble. I can see the good plan of God. And I can trust God because now I am placed higher than the trouble that is before me. Are we there? In this season of life, Lord is placing you, lot of you, higher than your trouble. Trouble has not been removed, but your elevation has removed. Your vantage point has been changed so that you can see what is beyond this trouble. Let trouble do not blindside you, do not, do not blindfold you. I want you to see beyond what is holding up that trouble. Beyond what, beyond what is there in, the, in, in, in your future, in the, uh, uh, surpassing that trouble. Hallelujah. Trouble is there just to do its own work and God will remove it whenever he wants it. He can do it with a flick of a finger, but he can just kept you so that we can trust God remain in his tabernacle uh, uh, position ourselves in a higher in the, in the, in the, into the tabernacle of God we can have a different vantage point same as what God has and God says it will do its work it will do its work hallelujah See, it's, it's, he's so amazing isn't it hallelujah praise God that's what the tabernacle and his presence does hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah 4, 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bible says, Hallelujah, praise Isaiah 4, 6. Bible says, there will be a tabernacle for three things. For shade in the daytime. You know, I come from a city where the temperature in summer goes 50 degrees, so you know how, how hot it is. You know, how you value that tree. You know? yeah. Isn't it? As Jonah, you know. He was just waiting in the outside of the city, waiting for the destruction of the city. And Bible said, God allowed this veil to grow over him and he was comforted because sun was bothering him. Hallelujah. He says, when things bothers you, things troubles you, then things can overpower you. You cannot do anything about it. God says, I will be the shed. 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 Did you, did you notice all those things? And it's very important for us to know that. We always pray for removal of hindrances, whereas God wants us to work into lives through hindrances. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. See, Jesus does not save you, does not save you because he had to go through all those troubles. He saves you through their troubles. You know, through the situations. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, there are, there are different seasons and different ways God works. You know, one storm, uh, we should do a sermon series on the storms of life, is it? Bible talks about it. In one storm, he let you go in the storm. Bible says, Jesus sent the disciples. Lord, you are better than weather network. You know what's going to happen. He still willingly sends them in the middle of the storm. And Bible says they were rowing. And they were so exhausted because they are rowing for three hours. They are so tired. You say, okay, let them come to the end of their own strength because they think they are seasoned fishermen. He said, let, let, let this end today, isn't it? Okay. And once that is done, Bible says, Jesus comes walking on the water. Jesus comes walking. See, Jesus could have just stayed on the mountain and spoke and the, the, and the storm would be quiet. But disciples would never know that, you know, even in their limitation, Jesus can still walk on the water. Yeah. And the second instance, Bible says, hallelujah, 
Jesus is in the boat, and then still storm comes. That's your life and my life. Pastor, I don't, I don't think there's sin in my life. I'm walking righteously. You know, I'm just fulfilling, you know, uh, uh, fulfilling the what he has placed on my life. Everything that I'm going, doing in my life is, my relationship is right with God. I can experience his presence in my life. Why still there is trouble? Ask these disciples. Jesus is in their boat. Is right there. Yet the boat is in the middle of a turmoil. Jesus is right there. We thought when Jesus is there, there is no storm. I don't think so. We should recheck our theology. Jesus was there and there was storm. Jesus was there and there was storm. Is that? Hallelujah. And the test comes for disciples. What, the, what comes out of their mouth? Either are they speaking to storm or they're speaking to Jesus. They speak to Jesus and say, Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing? And if you ask that question, I want to tell you, Jesus is still gracious to answer that for you. And say, let me increase your faith. So that that is the wrong question that you would not ask, but rather you would look at and speak to the storm, just like that I have spoken to the storm. Let it be quiet and it will be quiet for you. Jesus is in your boat. There is storm. And he allows this whole season of storm and turmoil and everything. Just talking about tabernacle. And he says, okay, now, now, now the storm has done its work. He speaks. And the Bible says, Quiet, and everything was quiet. If you read the passage carefully, there are two things. Bible says, the waves were against the boat, and there was a great wind. Are we there? Waves you can see, winds you cannot see. A lot of time we are just fighting the waves, but the cause is the wind. We're just fighting what is visible. The, the, the reason is something that is invisible behind it. We are fighting people, but it's not the people, the somebody who is behind those people that we need to fight. Are we there? When we are pulling down strongholds, we are not pulling down people, pulling down the powers that operate behind the people, which is from the pit of hell. Yes, Isn't it? Hallelujah. Yes, so our fight is actually not the waves. Waves we can see. Winds we cannot see. That's when we need Jesus to calm those winds. Yes, Hallelujah. And Bible says, then there was a great calm. Gujarati Malavi Maha Shanti Rai. Wow, it's written only one time in the Bible what his great calm looks like. Hallelujah. And that happened while Jesus is with them in the boat. Hallelujah. I pray, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He'll be shed and a shelter from heat, storm, and rain into your life. Hallelujah. Can we close? Let us just rise up. You know, you know we talk about this five blessings of shelter. Let us just lift our hand and receive that into our lives. And then I'm going to proclaim one blessing from the book of Ruth over your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All five, please. Or one after the other. doesn't matter. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to lift up your hand. Speak by faith. It's not, a, it's not a religious duty or anything. If you don't feel like it, don't do it. If you want to do it by faith, you can do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're going to say it together. Hallelujah. Praise God. One, two, three. His presence covers me in the day of the battle. Hallelujah. His presence hides me from the conspiracy of man. His presence shelters me from the accusing tongues. His presence sets me higher than my trouble. His presence is a shade and a shelter from heat, storm, and rain. Hallelujah. And I'm going to speak this blessing over your life from the Ruth chapter 2, verse number 12. Hallelujah. Praise God. May the Lord reward your work, and your wages will be full from the Lord. The Lord God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to seek the refuge. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. May the Lord reward your work and the wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wing, under whose shelter, under whose tabernacle, under whose refuge, that you have come to seek the refuge and shelter. Lord, I pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, every hand that is lifted or every soul that is present here right now, Father God, we speak, Father God, hallelujah, the goodness of your presence over their lives, Father God. Hallelujah. We speak, Father God, the shelter of Most High God, which is already there. Hallelujah. So that we will know that we are covered from all sides by the presence of God, Father God. We know that you are the one who hides us. You are the one who sets us higher than our trouble, Father God. And we say thank you for that, Father God. We bless your holy name, Father God. And as Habakkuk prayed, Father God, we also pray, Father God, that we shall rejoice in the God of our salvation, Father God. I pray, Father God, hallelujah, that enemy do not steal our joy and we do not allow him to steal our joy from the lies of the pit of hell, but we stand on your word, hallelujah, and according to our rejoice always, pray without ceasing because it is God's will for us in Christ Jesus, Father God. I pray, Father God, let the oil of gladness, hallelujah, 
the anointing of the holy spirit be poured upon your people father god not not a not a fake joy hallelujah not just hallelujah thank you something that is temporary father god but the oil of gladness trickles down father god trickles down father god from heaven over your people father god hallelujah let the anointing of joy over your people father god anointing of joy father god anointing of joy hallelujah praise god because in your presence there is fullness of joy father god anointing of your joy father god anointing of your joy father god hallelujah hallelujah we want to say thank you no matter where we are and what we go through father god your presence is always covered us because you promised us father god and i pray father god according to your word father god we choose to rejoice and walk in the joy of the lord father god as we pray as we pray right now father god as we walk in this rejoicing father god help us to draw waters from the wells of salvation father god hallelujah i pray father god let the joy become our strength father god if anybody is weak let your joy strengthen them in the name of lord jesus christ father god hallelujah praise the lord thank you jesus your joy become our strength father god hallelujah thank you jesus i praise your worship in lord thank you father god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah praise you lord god please make your way forward hallelujah ushers hallelujah let us help us into the communion of the lord hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus lord let there be shouts of joy in the tents of the righteous hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus let us let us join in disciples prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name let your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation forgive our debt and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever amen may the lord bless you and keep you now the may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now the love of the heavenly father the grace and the shelter of lord jesus christ the sweet communion fellowship partnership and joy of the holy spirit be with you all from this time forth and evermore in jesus name amen amen shalom blessings greetings to you may god bless you your family let this week be blessed and you'll experience the goodness of god in the land of living amen praise god thank you jesus